Now, when you've taken the four-week challenge, one idea after that question, I've done this with people. Where I met uh, this guy in the park recently in Atlanta and um, asked him the question, if you could wish one thing from God today for you, what would that be? And he said, I want to use my rap music to make a living. So I prayed for him for his rap music. And then I could sense he was interested, had time. And I said to him, um, if I could show you how you could begin a friendship with God, would you be interested? And he said, sure. And I brought out, now I brought out a small EQ, but I'm going to bring out a bigger one for this presentation. Um, and I said, this is a picture of God's heart for you and me. And, and God cares about us. He loves us. But why is it that God often seems unreal, far away? In fact, we even wonder if he's there, don't we? And the reason is because you and I are on the dark side and God is on the light. And God cannot mix with the dark. And you and I have all done wrong, haven't we? Can I ask you, have you ever told a lie? I know I have. What does that make us? Makes us liars, doesn't it? Have you ever taken something that didn't belong to you? I have. What does that make us? That makes us thieves. Have you ever wished somebody wasn't in your life? They were, they were out of your life. In fact, you, you'd be happier if they ceased to exist. I know I have. And in fact, that makes us murderers. In our hearts, Jesus said, we have bitterness or revenge or something, just want somebody out of our lives. That's the seeds of murder. And so here we are, liars, thieves, murderers. And God can't mix with the dark. Like oil and water don't mix, God and wrong don't mix. Light and dark don't mix. And it means we're cut off from God now. And when we die, we'll be cut off from him forever. Do you like that idea, being cut off from God? I know I don't. And God doesn't like it either. And so 2,000 years ago, God went and did something about it. And on a Friday at midday, God had his son put on a cross. And then he took all our lying and he put it on Jesus. And it's as if Jesus became a liar. Now he who knew no sin became sin for us. God put all our stealing on Jesus and as if Jesus became a thief. God all took all our revenge and bitterness, put it on Jesus as if Jesus became a murderer. And Jesus took upon himself the sin of the world, your sin and my sin, for all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. And for three hours from midday Friday to three in the afternoon, Jesus was on the dark side, separated from God in misery alone, paying the punishment for our sin, for our wrongdoing, which is being cut off from God. And then at three o'clock in the afternoon, he cried out, it is finished, it is paid for. And it's as if God, Jesus handed God a check that said the sin of the world, separation from God, and he wrote his name, signed his name and said, Father, here's the check. It's paid for in full. And he did that for you and me. And then he died. The government took his body, they put it in a tomb and sealed it, put soldiers there so no one would take the body. And Jesus stayed there Friday night, all day Saturday. But Sunday morning he got up, out. And he made a way for you and me to come from the dark side into the light. And the cross forms the bridge. And here is you and me standing here. And God is reaching out his hand to you and me. And he's saying, would you come take my hand? Would you come my way, not your way? I want to forgive you and I want to come lead your life. And this young man in, in the park, I asked him, do you want to take God's hand? I, I took it when I was 18 years of age. And he said, yes. And I said, this is what you have to do. The good book says, God's word says, you've got to humble yourself and say, I'm so sorry for the wrong that I've done. And thank you that Jesus took my place on the cross for the punishment for my wrong, for my sin. And please, God, would you forgive me? I want to put my hand in yours. I want to turn from going my way. I want to turn and I want to go your way. I want to come into this friendship with you. And that man in that park right then, as if he took my hand, he was taking God's hand, and he came and humbled himself and said, I'm so sorry and thank you that Jesus took my place. And please, God, would you forgive me and come lead my life? And he came into, he came into the friendship, began a friendship with God. So this is just um, a, a simple way of sharing that story. And just to mention a couple of things about this, one is... Um, there's a script that comes with this, but I produced a little script that uh, just highlights this way that I do it. 
um, that I've found helpful. And just to mention a couple of things about that, um, I find it helpful in evangelism today to start with the ear, not the tongue. Start with this, not this. You remember I asked a question, uh, if I could show you how you could bene- begin a friendship with God, would you be interested? And that's a question, and now you're listening, not speaking. And so to start with the ear, uh, not the tongue. And the second thing about evangelism today, I think it starts with a do, not a done. And in fact, that's where we go back to that question. Other question was, if you could wish one thing from God today for you, what would that be? And you're asking them, God wants to do something for you right now in your life today. And I think today with people, we've got to start with God loving them, living, powerful, wanting to help them right now with a need they have in their life, whatever that is, and to pray for them right there. And it doesn't start with a done. The cube is the done. We want to get there, but I don't think we start there normally with folks, but we want to get there. So I find that first question, if you could wish one thing from God today for you, what would that be? And then move to the cube. And and one way again is, if I could show you how you could begin a friendship with God, would you be interested? And the other thing is I can show you. If I said, if I could tell you, that's the ear. Most people don't want to be told something. Go, no, 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 I, I don't want to know. But if I could show you, and that perks their interest. What do you mean show you? And of course, that's not the ear, that's the eye. And they're looking at something. So I find that question then to bring this out and show them really, really helps. The other thing I found helpful is that Bill Hybel says the gospel starts with, with it's about God It's about us. And you notice it's inclusive language. I talk about us, you and me. I'm not pointing just the finger at them. We've all sinned. We're all in the same boat before God. So I use us language. And then, of course, it's about Jesus Christ and the cross. And then it's about you. And you zero in on that person. So I found that helpful from Bill Hybels. And that's what we want to do when we um, share the cross. And, um, And one other thing with this is the gospel is not about a product. We're not trying to present a product to them. It's not about a program, you know, like a 12-step program. It's a good program, but we're not presenting a program. We're not presenting a philosophy of ideas or a self-help thing. We're talking about a person, a person, Jesus Christ, And we're talking about four events that happened to him in three days. The four events that he died, buried, raised, and appeared. Happened in three days, on a Friday through a Sunday. And that's what this cube, and this is a great tool because it focuses on that. The four events, died, buried, raised, and appeared, that happened in three days to this one person. So, trust that will work for you. I I found it very helpful.